So we continue from the one uh, of 10 days of statistics in Hacker Rank, and there's gonna be a really interesting challenge. It says interportile, interportile range. Remember that in the previous challenge, we discussed quartile. Now we are going to be talking about interportile range. In the previous challenge, we calculated Q1, Q2, and Q3, and interportile range is simply Q3 minus Q1. So what this means is that we still will need a function to calculate the quartile. Now in this case, the peculiar thing about this challenge is that we are not giving an array, but we are giving a set of values and frequencies. So let's read a bit of this challenge. It says the interportile range of an array is the difference between the first quartile Q1 and the third Q3 quartiles Q3 minus Q1 given an array values of n integers and an array freaks representing the frequencies of the values elements. Construct a data set S where values i occur frequency as frequency freaks i, then calculate and print the S interquartile range rounded to scale of one decimal place like this. Okay, so basically uh, this is similar to what we've done before, except that in this case now, we are going to have values and frequencies and we are going to simply destructure values and frequencies into one dimensional array. We are going to be using a Python construct called zip. So let me show you how zip works. Uh, so if you have, we will actually be able to zip across these two items at the same time and we are going to actually uh, expand. So for each of the value, we are going to look through the frequency and uh, display it. So what we are saying is this. So I'm going to say, we start a new array, let's call it ARR is equal to an empty array. I'm going to use a for loop to zip. So I'm going to say for A and B in, or let me call it for, for frequency and value in zip. And specify the zip and specify Okay, so I'm going to now use for, for i in range. So I'm going to print the number of times uh, value uh, appear, right? So for one, I'm going to print it three times. So I'm going to sum, uh, I'm going to range tr across three times here. So how do we get this tree? Tree is now F here, so I'm going to say range F, right? For I in range F, I'm going to be inserting V into this array. So I'm going to say ARR.append uh, specify V. Yeah, so that's basically how to use the zip function. Once you do this, everything is solved. You can now calculate the quartile uh, using the method we used in the previous uh, tutorial. So let's go write this code in HackerRank and let's see how it plays out. So let's try this code in Hacker Rank and let's see, so let's see how it plays out. So let's go down. Uh, again, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to write a function to, to get the median. So I'm going to say df get median and giving it an array. And I'm simply going to say mid is equal to arr uh, len arr floor divided by two. And we are now going to check if, let me use a shortcut to write this. So I'm going to say uh, return, I'm going to return arr meet, right? If this is odd. So if line arr mod two is equal to, it's not equal to zero, it's not equal to zero. So if it's odd, we are going to return item at meet else rr meet minus one plus i cannot meet because arr meet sorry this is not the one arr meet um divided by two all right so this is the shortcut to write this function so uh i hope i got it but just to make things a bit clear uh whether we give it a sorted array or not uh, will no longer matter because we are going to sort it right here. So I'm going to say ARR the sort because calculating median requires you have a sorted array. Okay, so let me just cross check, return ARR mid if 
if it's odd, else return arr mid uh, minus one plus arr mid over two. Okay, we have our function to calculate the median at this point. So let's now go to use this function to calculate q1 and q3. Okay, so the first thing we want to do, let's calculate q1. q1, um, so I'm going to say, uh, let's start with saying, calculating the mid here first. So it's going to be mid is equal to, ah, uh, I told you we need to destructure this into a one dimensional array. So I'm going to say for uh, f and v in z uh, frequencies and values. And we're going to zip across by saying for i in range uh frames for i in range f and we are going to now say we need an array here so i'm going to call it a r r or a r let's call it a r is an empty array okay perfect so i'm going to now say a r dot append so what are we appending we are appending uh the value right so let me just cross check for i in range f append the current value so at this point we have our a r r so permit me to just sort it here a r dot sort okay perfect so we are now set to, to calculate uh the the q1 and q2 so to calculate q1 we are going to go from zero to mid so i'm going to say q1 is equal to get median I'm going to go from AR, uh, AR0 uh, to, so that, yeah, let's calculate mid here. So I'm going to say mid is equal to line of AR floor divided 2. And then get median, we're going to go from ARR0 to ARR, to, from ARR0 to AR, uh, what? It's going to be. Uh, give me one second, let me walk this out. Yeah, so ARR from zero to mid, right? Okay, so this is going to be our Q1. Let me just make sure, um, yeah. Yeah, so Q1 is always what it is, it's going to be Q1. Now, uh, we are now going to calculate Q2 based on if this is even or odd. So I'm going to say if um, the length of ARR, if it's odd, if it, let's start with if it's odd or if it's even, let's start with if it's even, then Q2 now will be get median. Then if it's even, Q2 is now going to be from mid to the end. If I'm not mistaken, I think, I, yeah, if it's even, so it's going to be from mid to, to the end and uh, one second, so it's going to be get median AR going from mid to line AR, okay. So if you want, you can uh, uh, calculate AR here, then AR and put it in a string, uh, in, a, in another variable N, maybe that may help to clarify things. Uh, else else q2 is going to be get median we are now going to calculate from uh, ar q2 now with ar we're going to say mid plus one mid plus one i think plus one to n to to n to len ar okay because if it is uh, odd, it means we are going to jump the item in the middle uh, and start from the next one, if you understand what I mean. Um, I think it should be fine now. So we are going to return Q2 minus Q, uh, Q1 minus Q2. So I'm going to say um, result, let's call it result, is equal to, but I want us to return this as integer or as a float let's check the one does return it as a float by one decimal place so i'm going to say result is equal to float 
uh, floats uh, Q2 minus Q1, all right? And I'm going to return this result. Is it to print or to return? Let me just check. Do they want us to print it or they want us to return it? So they say print, you can see they want us to print it right here. So I'm going to simply print the result rounded off to one decimal place. I'm going to round the result up. Result rounded to one decimal place. Uh, this should be fine. So I'm going to run this code and let's see if it works out fine. So it says we have an error. So there's going to be square brackets here. Yeah, there's going to be square brackets. Um, let's just say, make sure we don't have any more errors. Uh, let's check all that parts, whether we have errors, I think, no. So let's run one more time. And it passes the test case, as you can see. Let's submit this code and see if it passes all the test cases. And you can see it passes all the test cases. And I'm going to stop here. Meanwhile, I would like to thank you very much for viewing and also for learning. And I would like to remind you to subscribe to my channel. Leave me a comment if you have any challenges whatsoever. I remain kind on the Tech Pro and I'm always there for you.